The USA has just won the Paris Olympics 2024 games, or did they actually just tie with China and lose to New Zealand? What's going on? I ain't question it, but maybe you and your cousin Brian Shu do run the clip. The US might not have won the Olympics. The US got the most total medals and tied with China for the most gold medals. But New Zealand has the most total and gold medals per capita for countries with over a million in population. Grenada has the most total and Dominica has the most gold medals per capita for under a million. Arguments can be made that any of these countries won the Olympics. You have been properly informed. Boom, what a hypothesis, Andrew. He says you can make arguments for the US, China, New Zealand, Grenada, or Dominica in terms of who won the Olympics statistically. Grenada and Dominica, ah, harder to argue that. But anyways, guys, we're gonna get into it and talk about how rankings and statistics and all these different metrics matter and who really won it. Should the US be bragging right now or was it too close to call? But anyways, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Check out Small La Sauce, made in the USA. All right, here goes the ranking, Andrew. United States, number one. You know why? Because even though they tied with China for 40 golds, they got way more silvers. Now, David, theoretically, if China had won one more gold, then China would have won the Olympics, correct? Well, you know, if they would have added Hong Kong in there, which, you know, there's debatable whether they should or not, then they would be, have been at 42. Oh! All right, but then you have China, Japan, Australia, France, Netherlands, Great Britain, South Korea, Italy, Germany, New Zealand, which punches way above its weight class, um, Canada, Uzbekistan, ooh, Hungary, Spain, Sweden. Yo, I'm... So, surprise, Uzbek is up there. Shout out to the Uzbeks, man. Uh, they, um, Brian yeah. also goes on to say... And by, on a per capita basis, obviously, uh, Dominica and Granada were really high up there, but that India, Pakistan, Indonesia, and Egypt and Peru were the bottom five in terms of total medals per capita. Right, of total medals of the teams who even sent athletes to the Olympics, right? Because I don't think even every country did send people to the Olympics. Right, right, right. So anyway, let's get into our four reasons, Andrew, why medal counting is not perfect and what does all this discussion mean? even mean well david first of all i want to interject there and say america won the golds in the events that mattered not these obscure gold medal events like artistic swimming canoe sprint badminton uh shout out to all the asians that play badminton though but uh no that's part of the argument is that even though the gold medal count was tied that America won the gold in the sports that mattered. But anyways, we're going to get into that. So continue, David. Uh, point number one, Andrew, what does it all mean? What do gold medals, what does the fact that America by far had the most athletes go, um, won the most medals, 127 in total, and they're not state-sponsored like a, other, a lot of other countries, what does it all mean? Well, I, I mean, guess it means... Uh, a matter of its economic power usually and its organization. I do think that oftentimes sports training does coincide with military training. So if you have a really strong military in your country, then you possibly are also going to be good at sports. Not that they're the same thing, but they are somewhat related. So I think it's also a sign of prestige, right? Symbolism, your, your country is strong, your country's on top. You know, this whole past... 10, 15 years has been very heated and tense with China. So to America, to edge this out, it kind of like lets America know, be like, hey guys, <laughs> hey, hey. Woo. Hey, man, that one was real close, but we still the top empire out there. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, you know, uh, China was the upcoming superpower and they won in 2008, the Olympics, but uh, America's back on top. Hey, Andrew, interestingly enough, Netherlands was a former world superpower before the British were in the like late 1700s. They're still up there. Yeah. I mean, usually the more advanced countries do better. Like you have right. to have some sort of advancement in your Yeah, country. so I was looking into it and I was, uh, the, the Olympics are viewed as very interesting because it's a projection of both soft and hard power at the same time. And there's, it's very difficult because usually entertainment is soft power, military might, economic, trade, manufacturing, hard power. Uh, the Olympics seems like some mixture of both. Soft and hard. <laughs> That's funny. Um, did uh so number point number two did America win the tiebreaker because it went to silvers, right? And I think that it's crazy to think that some of these gold medals 
are won literally by like 0.2 seconds. I don't know if China was any in any races that lost by that amount, like especially in the sprints and running and swimming and stuff. Those are like fractions of seconds. So the matter of winning gold to silver can be a spl- half of a fraction of a split second. So I guess that it kind of goes to show you like uh, if one gold had won for China, then China would have won the Olympics, right? That's crazy to think. That is crazy. Just one, if, if the javelin was maybe thrown a little further, if that point on the uh, that game, you know. Well, I, I guess know. the debate then would have come to like, like you said, we don't care about those rinky dink sports. We care about like track and field and basketball. Yeah. Cetera, I mean, so. listen, I guess my opinion on this is America one yeah. because you have to have some type of ranking system. And this is the ranking system it has always been. We don't need to switch it up now because this is what the teams prepare for. If every team is preparing to rack up medals and gold medals primarily, then that is what you have to judge it by. So that's why I'm not, I'm, I'm going to say America won the Olympics. That makes sense. But it was close. And I actually think it's actually a huge testament that America is not state sponsored. It's literally private funded or athlete funded. Yeah, no. And you'd be surprised, guys. America, such as great country. Everybody lives such great lives here. Life is so nice here. But actually, the Olympic athletes hardly get any funding, if any, from the government. Right. And actually, like, even China, a lot of their top athletes are essentially all sponsored. Right, right, right. Uh, but I guess on conversely, the economics here and the companies and the Nike sponsorships and Adidas or whatever are also the biggest in America. Sure, sure, sure. Point number three, did China actually win because of Hong Kong? Because technically, Hong Kong is part of China post-1997, and they won two gold medals in fencing. Oh, it's going to get political, man. Uh, my argument is no, they can't include Hong Kong because they have a different flag. I know that Hong Kong is technically part of China now, but they have a different flag. They go under a different flag. They compete under a different name. I don't think you can just start adding them in. They might not be- They give the interviews in Cantonese rather than Mandarin, even though they can't speak Mandarin too. Listen, Olympics, it's all about waving your flag- Hong Kong gets introduced as a separate place. So regardless, if- Yeah, especially if you count uh, Taiwan, then we are 144. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. We're not there yet, guys. Um, point number four, should it be divided by how many athletes were sent per overall medal or per overall gold? Because if we go by the amount of athletes sent, Andrew, um, Team USA won a gold per 14 athletes, but China won a gold per 9.7 athletes. So this is where China's argument comes in. Per gold, it won more athletes, per athlete sent. Like per capita sent. Yeah, right. Per, per capita, capita sent, not per capita population. Right, per capita athlete, essentially, if right, capita right, right. was athletes. Per Olympian. Uh, I mean, is this really a good way to rank it? I... I don't think so. But then if we go by medal count, America won 4.5, four medals per athlete, whereas China only won 4.26 medals per athlete. I think that this argument kind of comes down to, let's say you, this is the NBA, right? Scoring champ of the year. That medal, that, that award goes to the person who averaged the most points. But here's the catch. They have to have played a minimum number of games. If somebody plays three games that season and then gets hurt, but in those three games, they scored 40 points, they're not going to win the scoring champ award. Right, right, right. Well, they changed it now. You can't win NBA MVP unless you play 70 games. Yeah, which makes sense. You have to play a certain number of games because it's like, yeah, maybe you were extremely important for 30 games, but you did. You weren't there for, you weren't available. Right, right, right. Also, there are sports like soccer and volleyball that send like maybe like 15 athletes to the games, whereas right. like for track and field or swimming, it's a singular athlete. Right, I mean, I think America is really good at the team sports, the large team major sports, right? Basketball, you know, you can bet that they're probably gonna win gold, um, men and women's, you know? So I think that, yeah, I mean, listen, America edged it out for sure. America won. Um, is it all about population in terms of winning? Because some people notice, well, a lot of the countries that win, they are larger countries. But obviously other people said, no, it's GDP mixed with sports and university and sports at a youth level mixed with population size. You, you need everything. You mean what, what will determine how well a country does is what yes. you're saying. Whether they have developed college sports, 
have developed youth sports, right? I mean, right. and a lot of people. Obviously, China has a ton of athletes to pick from, right. and they train them from a young age, a lot of them. And I, I guess with a large population, you get a higher probability for genetic outliers, but you still need the infrastructure systems in place to train them from youth to develop them into the elite of the elite. For sure, for sure. No, it's not just population. Definitely sports system. I mean, Australia punched pretty well above its weight. Australia is a pretty small country, only 26, 27 million people. And look, it's right below Japan. If you think about it, Australia won the Olympics. Right. South Korea did really well as well. And But of course, New Zealand, in terms of population to medals, actually was the most. Right. What like if for New any Ze country over a million. Right, right, right. And somebody said, well, what if New Zealand had 70x as the amount of people? Wouldn't it just dominate the entire Olympics? But here's the thing uh, that people got to understand. If New Zealand was 70 times as big, they might also struggle with poverty. They can stay a rich country because they are like a smaller country. They might get embroiled in all these wars globally trying to maintain their global interests. It would just be way more complicated of an existence for New Zealand rather than the one they have right now where they're sort of like Australia's little brother where they can just focus on sports. Yeah, guys, I, I mean, I get the hypothetical. I don't think you can just multiply a country's population and assume that it's a linear growth. All right. As you can see from the large ass countries like China and India, it is not necessarily a linear growth model. Right. right. <laughs> you can't just times everything by like because America because China's like maybe a little bit more than three times the size of America or about three times the size. You can't just times it's not that China is three times the size of the GDP, of the per capita, of the like that, of the gold medals. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, well, that's why a lot of people don't really understand about like China overtaking America on overall GDP. It's like, why wouldn't it? It's three times bigger. Right. Literally, and everybody works. <laughs> um, this <laughs> next comments were from all the Americans basically saying like, you know, basically rah-rah, kind of like tribalistic about America winning. And I totally understand this too, but everybody was saying like, this is like such an American way to act. Because, but you but know, Americans feel very entitled to winning like most global competitions, right? Cause like we are number one, right. where it's like, that's why it's so different versus like you saw like Serbia so happy to win the bronze in the, you know, for t team Serbia for basketball. But it's like, because they're such a small country and a lot of people don't even know they exist. Yeah, we were expected. I mean, I'm gonna tell you this, the fact that it was so close, I'm not saying it should worry America, it's not really something to worry about, but it is like something notable. I'm like, dang, yo, like, America, like China, really could have won the Olympics this year, like by one gold medal. Yeah, and won. Team USA basketball was in danger of losing two times, or maybe like even three times. Right, they almost lost to Serbia. It's crazy. Um, somebody said, to be fair, many of these athletes actually live and train in the U.S., but maybe they just run in the Olympics underneath a different flag. Yeah. So everybody's saying like America is still the best country to like live and train and be good at sports. Yes, yes. I think that's especially true for the smaller countries. I mean, I'm sure some Chinese athletes train in America, but I would say probably a lot of the Chinese athletes do train in China. I mean, once in a while, you'll have your Kyle Anderson and like, you know, your randoms that are not really Chinese, but like play for China. I mean, Eileen Gu won some golds for the Winter Olympics for China, you know, right, and right. she wasn't like trained raised in, in China. Mostly trained in America, Yes, right? mostly trained in America. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, this just goes basically just to show you everybody was arguing about like, is America still the greatest? Is it still the, the um, not the greatest anymore? Because it, it kind of, I guess there's some correlation because Andrew, in the West, there's a lot of people worried about economic and social instability. And this comes at a time where America barely ekes out a win. So, but ultimately America still won the Olympics. So I guess it's like, at least it doesn't add any fuel to that unstable mindset. Mm, yeah, I think that um, in a way, it's funny to think that the Olympics this year was somewhat a moral win. And it was almost like a feel good story for America. Like. Aside from the economics behind it, whatever, like, feel good. It's just, like, it was nice for Americans at this time of division, at this time when Republicans and Democrats are at each other's throat. Well, they're at both least, accusing each other of ripping the country apart, right? right? At least on the extreme ends, these two extreme ends, right, of the left and the right are, are at each other's throats. And there's all this thought of, like, tension with China and China's taking over. Oh, blah, blah, blah. China's doing this. And then it's like, hey, or we got the wars going on, multiple wars, right, that we're involved in. Or uh, that we're tied to. So it's like, it's kind of nice for Americans. And I do think it brought America somewhat together for a moment. Right. To be like, 
hey, guys, we still killed it at the main sports, and we won the Olympics. Hey, man, I was cheering for Team USA against yeah. France pretty hard. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I was getting into it. I almost caught myself off guard. I was like, man, I just feel like, you know, really patriotic right now. Yeah. And I guess, man, like you said, I think in America, we just take winning for granted like winning mm -hmm. the globe for granted. Yeah. And this year it was like, everybody would like kind of held their breath and was like, okay, we're number one. We're number one. And they still did it. But like I said, I mean, I think that it's a really good way to take a look at the developmental systems of other countries. And also, I don't think that Americans should just eat this one out and just be like, oh, all right, now time not to think about the status of our country over the next four years. Till the oh, next no. one. You know what I mean? Like, we, you should look at it and be like, okay, we're still number one. What would it take for us to make America better? You mean to say it was somewhat humbling that it was so close. Yeah, I think it was that's what really you're saying. close. Yeah, and it was really close in a lot of sports. No, it's like won. good that America won, good that we won, but it was close, somewhat humbling. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, I think overall, uh, you know, man, if you guys want to wave the American flag, go for it, man. I think a lot of the time, like the American flag is associated with like extreme right wing uh, politics, you know? Probably for the past couple of decades. Yeah, that, that, or last, at least last 15 years, you know, last 10 years, which I don't, I don't appreciate because I'm like, why does it have to be so political? It's like the flag is, the American flag looks good. It's a good looking flag. It looks good and it's cool to wave. So, man, I might, man, the Olympics are over, but I wish I bought some Olympic gear. Anyways, uh, any last words, David? I would say this, man. It's really interesting to see. I mean, I think there's a lot larger discussions that we, we didn't get into in this video. Like, what does it mean to be American? There was a lot of comments that were like the most rah-rah for America were from, uh, you know, I would imagine like heritage white or black Americans. You know, uh, they were the most like, I, I guess, tribalistic about the U.S. You know, obviously a lot of us, we like come from like have immigrant parents from all around the world and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not that we're not supporting America, but we just don't see it necessarily as blindly rah rah white and black as other people either but i don't know i think there's just a lot of questions america eat this one out i'm happy for it but i think you know there could be some discussions that come from it let us know what you think in the comment section below who won the olympics until next time we the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.